care about. They're special in one way or the other. Just make sure you find points that are relevant for your audience, that make them go like, yeah, this brand, this is my brand. Because in the end, you want them to become from customers, you want them to become fans, but then also, next step, you want them to become brand ambassadors. And this is when the, the magic really happens, when they do the work for you. And that's priceless. The thing is, what is your biggest asset as a, as a brand? Like, what can you use to get customers excited about your brand? A lot of people say, it's the product. Now, I've worked for BMW for 13 years, full-on engineering company. I would say 80% of the people who work for BMW say the product is the biggest asset. Yeah, it's important. But to be honest, it's not the only thing. There's other things that are important. And the product alone won't sell itself. So having a good product is important, but it's not gonna get you to a point where you can properly grow your brand and where you can turn customers into fans. Another one that's always quoted, our biggest assets are our employees. Shit, they're important, and you better treat them well. But is it really the biggest asset? I would say it's important, it's very important. IT, more and more important. The rise of big data, IT gains massive momentum, and it, it is important. You need to run it properly, you need to understand it, you need to use IT properly, you need to invest in it. But is it the biggest asset? No, I don't think it is. Is it your ideas and your intellectual property? Another very important factor. But I think the most important asset for any company are the clients, the customers. And I say that for one reason, because they pay the bills. If it weren't for the customers, your brand would not exist, your salary wouldn't get paid. So whilst the IT, the ideas, the employees, the product is all very important and it's vital for the success of the business, I think the one thing you need to focus on first are the customers. You lose them, you lose your business. Simple as that. So you need to first look at them and try to understand them. I mean, look, let's look at those four little chaps. Typical school situation in Singapore. A lot of different nationalities, a lot of different styles. Let's just assume those four kids were the customer. It is important to know what's their cultural background. What languages do they speak? What are they excited about? What sort of the, the environment they grew up in? In order to actually reach out to them and get them excited and make your brand desirable for them, you need to know who they are and what, what gets them excited. Because unless you fully understand who they are and how they think and what gets them excited, you're not gonna be successful. So just look at your customers. Try to learn as much as possible about them. Talk to them. I mean, if you wanna, for example, throw a party, just go to the little chaps and ask them, hey, do you want chocolate? Possibly the guy on the right is gonna say, nah, I'm not really into chocolate, whereas the guy on the left is gonna say, yeah, I love chocolate. But you've gotta to talk to them. If the guy on the right says, nah, I'm not really into chocolate, ask him why. Talk to them. Just try to find out, as, find out as much as possible about your customers. And then, turn them into fans. Make sure that what you do gets them excited. Make sure that they also talk about it, that they get so excited about it that they want to share what you're doing with their friends, with their families, on their social platforms. So turn them into fans. Now the big question obviously is, how do you turn them into fans? You can't just tell them, hey, you're my fan now. Can you please just talk nicely about my brand? It's not gonna work. It has to come from within. So let's just have a look at a few different ways of how you can manage to turn your customers into, f into fans. One thing that always works really well, do things that they haven't done before 
or that haven't been done before. This, for example, was an idea that we developed a few years ago at BMW together with Leica Camera. We said, you know what? Let's create a regional photo competition. And in every country, we hold a national event, one day event, where we take people to a really cool hip place, take some photos throughout the day, just give them a cracker experience, then do some online voting, and by the end of the competition, the winners of every single country go to Namibia for the big final. Now, the one thing we wanted to do in Singapore was, I thought, hey, Singapore is small. Things have all been done. So I said, you know what, why don't we take two cars and do a shooting at Changi? My team just about fainted. They were like, oh, cannot, 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 no, I said, why not? Oh, no, 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 cannot, cannot. I'm like, why not? So we made a few phone calls, and there we were. For the first time ever, Changi opened the doors for a select group of our customers so they could do a shooting in, the hang in that, in that um, restricted area. We had to go through, I think, four different security checks. Just getting there took us about two hours of checking, but that whole feeling of, oh my God, I am the only one that's allowed in there, that gave customers this feeling of, wow, I'm with BMW, I get a special treatment. I get to do things that others can't do. On the other side of the photo was a plane that hadn't even been shown to the press yet. It was just before the celebrations for the Singapore 50-year um, anniversary. The press had not seen it yet. We were a group of people with cameras, and they just said, you know what? We trust you don't take photos of that plane. Trust us, in, trust us fully with you. Just focus on your two cars and that plane there. And also that gave our customers that feeling of, wow, they must have really pulled some strings. So do first time activities. Give your customers that feeling of they are special. Money can't buy moments. This is a photo that was taken on top of Germany's highest mountain where we took a group of multi-millionaires to experience the latest newly launched 7 Series. Now, a lot of them were very formal, very rich, very small people, lovely people. Though. So we took them on top of that mountain and we started a snowball fight. Initial reaction was a bit reserved. Then we said, you know what, guys, just join in. We had the most amazing snowball fight, something no one had ever done before. They loved it. We had such a blast. It was something they did for the first time, but it was also a great experience for them. We took some amazing shots. They all got wet and we laughed and it was just an amazing thing. Was it necessary in order to sell the car? No, it wasn't. But it was necessary in order to, make, to give them the feeling, hey, we're having a lot of fun with this brand. We're having great experience with this brand, and this is somehow different. Another money can't buy moment. This one was during the um, final of the photography competition. We took some cars on top of the mountain, had some glasses of wine, and watched the sun go down over Namibia. Pretty special moment. Do you need to then say, hey, the car is really good, it got you up the hill? No, you don't need to say that. Having that moment there, giving people the opportunity to do something like that, is enough to get them excited. Immersive brand experiences. That was the same to where we did the, um, the snowball fight. So what we did, rather than do advertising excessively, we said, let's take some of the marketing budget and invite some of our prospects for the 7 Series to Germany. Three, four day brand experience tour. No sales show. No hard facts. Nothing. It was just a come with us, we'll take you on a journey. We'll let you have a great time. We didn't have any salespeople there going pushy, pushy, pushy. No. We had people there that waited for, for our customers, our prospects to come and ask questions, then we would answer them. And the fact that we didn't push, but that we were just facilitating an amazing journey, 
giving them a great experience and just being there for them with the information if they were ready to ask for it, that really made the difference. We had impressive um, return on investment on this one. It was an expensive exercise, but we had um, conversion, sales conversion rates of up to 150%. Now the target I had gotten from our rather critical CFO was 30%. He was like, you must sell 30% cars. I'm like, yeah, easy. We ended up doing 150%, which means that some of the guys that went on these tours bought more than one car. And in some cases, we had a situation, for example, in Myanmar, where we had a special edition where we only had one unit. So two guys on the tour were kind of fighting over it. And in the end, they said, you know what? We want to continue being friends. You don't take it, I don't take it, we'll give it to him. So they got another friend who wasn't even on the tour to buy that special model, and they both ordered other models. So that's how it works. I mean, once you get that personal connection and people get excited about your brand, the sales will come. Unusual venues, another way to stand out and to do something different for your brand. That was an event we did for ladies only. You know how most of the time the gentleman gets the invite to an event, to a conference, and then it says plus one. Now, a lot of the ladies, especially when they are successful, don't really appreciate being reduced to plus one. What we did here, we said, you know what? Forget about your husbands tonight. This is the event for ladies only. And very clearly, do not bring your husbands. It was on a Friday night. We invited um, 40 um, ladies, high net worth individuals again in Singapore, and invited them to this private house. This used to be the Spanish embassy. It's now privately rented, actually, by friends of mine. And we said, you know what? Can we do an event at your house? And they said, yeah, you know, let's do it. So we had this beautiful venue. And funny enough, about half the, half the ladies that came said, you know why we came? Because we've never been to any of these black and white houses. We really wanted to see what it's like inside. So just choosing a special venue sometimes gets you the, the attention of your customers. We then ran a very special um, session on perfume making with a um, perfume specialist from France. And it was, it was a great experience. Was it the perfect setting in terms of everyone had the perfect chair? No, it wasn't. It was rather personal. But it really did the job. And to see how the ladies reacted and how engaged they were, how they shared it with their friends, how they how, how they spent that evening with BMW and became fans without having to talk about engine size, prizes, or accessories. You know how normally when you do an event, you sort of have to, sort of you invite 100 people, maybe 50, 60, 70 say they'll come, but in the end, on the day, you get a lot of people pulling out the last minute. In this case, within the last two hours before the event, 10 ladies called and said, um, by the way, I just wanted to quickly check, is it okay if I bring one or two friends? So there was so much demand that in the end, we actually had an attendance rate that was far higher than the, the invites that we had initially sent out. So it wasn't just that we had less and sort of a good attendance, no. More people than we originally in, um, invited came and joined the event. And that shows that the unusual venue, the event concept really worked and it resonated well with the ladies. Another rather unusual venue. This was a conference which was meant to be held in Singapore in a convention